you have your JavaScript, CSS, and HTML files. It can be local, it can be a remote, but normally it's local, so it's packaged in the app. And then magically, Cordova can package that into a native app with just one web view, and that web view is, is, is smart enough to communicate with uh, native code, so it can access camera, context, and all that. So that's the power of Cordova. And once you go to talks like uh, Ionic talks or, or even like PhoneGap, everyone tells it's beautiful, right? It's beautiful, it just works, and you do like Cordova, create, everything works. But then you get excited, and it happened to me, all right? I got super excited years ago on, on doing these things, and then you go to your, to your computer and you try to, okay, this is a lot of fun, I'm gonna join this party. This is kind of the web developer that heard about this and wants to, to join. And then it's not very pleasant, right? I, I mean, you can get there, but it's not smooth. It's not a smooth ride, right? You get there in the end, but it's not super smooth. How many people here had no problems at all configuring Cordova? Oh, that's, that's nice because sometimes there's like, Superheroes that show up and say, no, we didn't have any problems. And it, it, it's fun to see that it happens as well. Okay, so this week, this past week at work, I got two computers just to see like, okay, let's, this can be right. Like people like these things, people get excited about these things. And I think that the world deserves a talk when you go through the process and show it doesn't have to be painful, right? Once you know the process, you can go back and configure different computers and everything. So that's, that's my plan here. So this week I spent two days collecting all the information. I got a MacBook Air in a, in a Dell computer. It's not like a super computer. One has four gigs. The Windows one has eight gigs, but it's Windows. So sorry, Windows users. How many us Windows users here? Okay. Sorry with the jokes here, please. It's, Okay, so first thing, let's turn, up the, turn on the computers, and that's what happened. I don't know if it was corporate, like the corporate computer or something, but it took me like four minutes to boot up on Windows, just like to turn on the computer. So uh, I used to teach this class with other instructors, and there's one guy that always starts like his, his part saying that Windows developers, like developing on Windows is like living la vida loca, you know, because it's, you see so many like crazy things that don't make any sense, right? And you had to be really, really brave to develop on Windows. And I tried, it was not pleasant, but you guys are really good developers. All right, so what is the first step? The first step is go to uh, the website, cordova.apache.org, Hit download, go all the way down, and it recommends you to use the CLI, the command line interface. You can go ahead and, and use the source, but then you have to do everything manually, right? You have to use all the binaries to, to all the executables to, to compile and everything. So the CLI helps you a lot. Another very important tip that I have is every time you search for something about Cordova and you go on Google or anything, as soon as you see that page, look top right, right? Because it happened to me a lot of times, you found the solution, and then you, you add that to, to your project, and then all of a sudden you see it's like a version that's super old, and it doesn't work. So first thing, look top right, and it helps a lot. And then set, moving forward, it tells you you need to install Node and Git. It used to, to, to be more complex before, like you had Ant and, and different things, but now it's, it's getting easier, and less dependencies are, are in place right now. So let's start with Node. So you go to the Node website, you download Node, and then on the Mac, everything kind of, it, it's, a, it's a seamless process, right? You, you hit install, you go through the process, and then you go on your terminal, command space, ter, uh, uh, terminal, and then you type Node, for example, version, it works. It's a nice developer experience, right? On Windows, on the other hand, you install everything, it tells you it's gonna install it there, it tells it's gonna work, and then in my case, this week, I mean, it works sometimes, but this like work doesn't work thing kind of scares me a little bit. It's like extra things that you have to go through. So it didn't work, so it was a bad developer. So I went back and said, oh my God, maybe it's because I didn't add that to the path, right? Or it didn't get added to the path. 
So uh, you go there, you, you click on start button, and then you go to computer, proper, right click properties, advanced settings, and then you get to this tons and tons of windows. Maybe that's why it's called windows, right? Because you have to <laughs> click here, and then you go to environment variables, and then you go on the system variables, not the, the, the user here, the system one, and then you get to this part, and I don't know what was it, the problem was, but I saw it was, it was added there, right? It was added there, but it didn't work, so what was the problem? Then, okay, just to, to play safe, I went back and I copied the, the location, I just placed, it's the same text, same everything, and then I hit uh, the, the prompt there, and I typed note, now everything works and it was there. It was like, really? It's tricky, right? I don't know why it happened, but it happened this week. Sorry again, guys, it's, it's, it happens. And I see this so many times. All right, and then you go to Git. And it's not always like in favor of, of, of the Mac. In this case, uh, it went better on Windows. So you go on Git, install Git, installs and then you go to prompt and you type git, you have it, it's working. Now Node and, and NPM can download everything via git because it's installed. On the Mac, on the other hand, it, it's not that it doesn't work, but once you download and install everything, you go through all the process, the first thing that happens is you have, if it's a new computer, you have to allow that to install things that are not from the App Store, right? That's very basic. And then every time you type git on terminal, you see that it asks to install the Mac uh, command line tools, and that has a very specific version of Git that it's not the one you installed. So to fix that and have a, a nice developer experience, you finish the, the, the installation, and then after installing everything, you go to your terminal, you, you create a new file with touch and then dot bash profile. That file gets loaded every time you open terminal. And then you enter the, 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 the location where your, your, your git is. And then you reload that via source.bash profile. And then everything works. So now you have access to the latest and the one you installed. So not a lot of people do that, but it's always good to have the latest version of git. I, I really like it. OK, next thing, install Cordova. So on Windows, now that you have Node and Git, you can, you can do npm install minus g dash d Cordova. Everything works. Cordova installs, right? That's the CLI that has all the commands that, uh, that save you from doing a lot of things. On the Mac, on the other hand, you type npm install Cordova minus, uh, dash g, and then you get this warning, like this error saying that you have to be a super user in order to have uh, to, to, to do that, to, to place files inside that NPM folder. How many people have this problem? Not problem, but restriction. How many people fixed it already? Okay, so it's like, and some people did nothing. <laughs> it's like, they don't do that. Okay, and when it happens, it's like, you don't wanna type sudo all the time, right, and then enter your password for every single NPM installation globally, you want to be more productive. And it turns out it's very easy to fix that. It's just a matter of in, uh, enabling that, changing the ownership of that folder and all the, the, the subfolders to your user. And to do that, you type sudo chong, which is uh, change ownership recursively, so minus, uh, dash r, and then your username, so if you, if you don't know your username, just type on terminal who I am, and you get your username. And then you change the ownership of that, that local file, that local folder, and everything starts to work. So moving forward, you just type npm, and then install everything, no problems at all. And then you can create new, new, new things, uh, new projects in Cordova very easily. So you guys know this, right? How many people already created apps with Cordova here, just for me to see. Do you guys want to see how to do that? Or I can move forward and, can I do that? It's, it's move forward or do, move? Okay, cool. So just, I'm not gonna do that, but if you want to create, pro, now that you have Cordova, the CLI installed, it's just a matter of going to the terminal, Cordova create, and then the, the folder that's gonna be created and have your, your app, 
and then the reverse domain, like to the ID of, our, of your app, you can have numbers and, and you can't have numbers and everything, and then your app name. If you want space in your app name, you do it this way, and then you go to the config.xml later on, and you can change that and add the space. But here, you can have spaces. And then you add the platforms, you add the plugins, and you can start moving forward. But then if you need to build and, and have those, those apps running on devices or on the simulator, you have to configure the SDK, right? And it's not super fun, it has some, you have to download some files. So you're starting with uh, Android. It's pretty much the same process for Windows and Mac. It's exactly the same process. First of all, you download the JDK 7 or, 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 or higher. That comes with the JRE. And you download, install that, and then you inst uh, download and install Android Studio. You can, you can download just the SDK if you want. It works to build things. But if you want to publish to the store and everything, it's a little trickier. And uh, Android Studio helps you a lot there, right? And then you need to add two folders to your path to your system path. Just like we saw we did with Git on the Mac and with the uh, environment variables with Windows, you just need to add tools and platform tools. And another important point, he has to, for, for this version of Cordova, the one that's now, it's 5.1.1, you have to use the API 22 and the build tools 19 and plus. It keeps changing, but that's what you need. So go there, download the JDK, then download Android Studio, I, I really wanted to make this as a good reference for, for new, new people getting to Cordova as well. And then you add to the path on the Mac, and then same thing on Windows, and then all of a sudden you can start creating apps, everything works fine, right? All right, how many people here debug apps on real devices? I say you create an app and then you debug. What do you do normally? What's the process you do like to debug your app? Let's say here you, on, on iOS you use Safari and on Android, X, but for Cordova? Yeah, that's true. So to, to build the application after everything is configured, you go to Cordova build Android and then it builds that. If you wanna run on the device, it's Cordova run Android. I have it here. Uh, in the end, I'll, I'll show it, how to, how to do that. And then if you want to inspect it, I'll do it very quickly here. So let me get the, I'll turn mirroring on so we can see that. Okay. So let's say I have a new window here. And then I'll go to my desktop. And then to create an app, just like we saw that before, create app folder, the, app, the folder that's gonna be created so this folder doesn't exist, and then your ID and then the app name. Once you, you create that, then you enter that folder and you can add platforms. Cordova, platform, add, then iOS, Android. Let's do Android first. Sorry? If you want, but you can do it later. I just did Android first because I want to show you how it works. So you can do Cordova run. Just make sure you have an Android phone connected. I really recommend like for real world cases to use devices because the simulator on Android is, it's not realistic. It's very, very painful. Then you do Cordova and run Android. It builds it and then it runs on the device. So while it's building here, let's open Chrome. And I will show when, it ha when it's open. Okay, build succeeded. Now I have it running on my phone. And now I can go to Chrome because it's connected via USB. And I can inspect by going to this location and now it's just like, it's dev tools. I can do everything, and the cool thing is that if I do things on the phone here, I can, I can see it happening here, and I can also type, interact with things here, and it happens on the phone. So that's really, really powerful. That's for, for Android.
for iOS, first of all, you add the platform. As of last night, there's a problem with the new plugin, the whitelist plugin, the new version, this guy here. Where's the name here? Uh, this guy here. Because the new version depends on Cordova iOS 4. It's not released yet, so you have to manually add this plugin. Cordova plugin, add, whitelist, and you need to go back one, one version, and then everything works. So it's, it, it's fixed already. I just saw the website, the bug is fixed. They're just waiting for the next release to, to make it happen. And then to run on the simulator, you do Cordova run. I'm getting ahead of my slides here, but that's Android. On iOS, the first thing, you have to have a Mac, right? You can't do that on Windows. You can develop on Windows, but then you have to have a, a service like Ionic, or PhoneGap, PhoneGap build that can, that can help you get there. And you need Xcode and you need the command line tools, the ones I mentioned before. So to get the command line tools installed, just uh, type Xcode dash select dash dash install. And to run on simulators, you, do, uh, you need to use the package iOS sim for simulator. And to run on devices, you need iOS deploy. So I can, after installing this, guys, I can go back to my terminal and I want to say I want to run iOS on my simulator. So it opens the simulator here once it's finished. Run succeeded. So it's the same. Now it's huge. It's the same thing that we saw there on Android, but now it's running here on the simulator. And to debug this guy, like you guys mentioned, I just need to go to Safari. And then with that guy open, I can see US simula iOS simulator. And then I can access the index, just like I did with Chrome. And I can debug here. So I don't need to have any other uh, tool to do that. I can do it all from Safari and Chrome there. Cool. All right. So on the device, then, it's just. Cordova run iOS dash dash device, and it runs on the device. OK, moving forward, just like I showed you. Now I think you're in a happy place where things are working, and it was not that painful, right? So if you follow those steps, sometimes pretty much all the errors are there. All the, all the errors you can, you can encounter are, are, are there, and you don't have to suffer moving forward. So that was the main idea of, of doing this.